Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today I have a piece of shrub. This comes to us from our friend Dave at Calmwood Creations. Dave sent this along a while ago, and I've been putting it off because, of course, I'm not a spindle turner. But I thought we might give it a try, something a little different. I'm going to make a vase out of it. I've done my very best to find the center here and the center here. And I've driven my four-prong drive center into here. Dave doesn't know what kind of shrub it is. And he said that right on here. Shrub. Shrub branch question mark. Let's see what we can do with this shrub branch question mark. I've got the uh, top end there lined up. Now I'm just driving in the live center. And as you can see, I've just put my four-prong live or drive center in the uh, chuck jaws. There's no point in taking the chuck off. And I'm all for that. So I'm just applying some pressure here. First thing I want to do is make a uh, tenon on the bottom. Make a base for it to set on. So I'm just going to bring up my tool rest. Let's see what kind of speed we can get out of this. Uh, about 800. We'll mark out for the tenon. Doesn't leave a lot of room for a base. I'm going to take a 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge and work on that a little more. And I'm going to take this diamond point tool and square up the sides of the tenon. Okay, I feel good about that. Now my plan was to turn this down, but uh, maybe not, huh? Maybe just leave it the way it is and just come up here and start turning. Or maybe no turning on the outside. What if we just hollow this thing out and just sand up the bark and put a finish on there? Well, for a guy that doesn't like spindle turning, this is the way to go. Just don't turn it. Okay, well, I guess I could, I could do all that once I turn it around and get it in the chuck anyway. So let's do that. I'll get this turned around. I spent a little bit of time measuring uh, the maximum diameter of this piece, or the minimum diameter of the piece, which starts about here. And that's about two and five-eighths of an inch. So I'm going to take this two-inch Forstner bit and drill all the way to the bottom, or nearly to the bottom. And then I'll, I'll, I will do some turning up here at the top. And I might end up doing some turning on the body of the piece, but I kind of like the idea of just leaving it all bark and just finishing up this top area here. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes, see how it looks. So I'm going to have the lathe spinning at about 350 RPM. Let that cool off a little bit. That's a lot of rubbing on that metal. This is probably pretty boring to watch, so I'll be back in a little bit. Well, what I figured out, being a novice at this, I have to figure it out. I don't just know it. I'm going, I, once I drill a hole all the way in here, I won't be able to provide any tailstock support to do my turning out here. And because this is about uh, seven and a half, eight inches long, that's a long ways out from the chuck with no tailstock support. So I'm going to bring my tailstock up now and drive that live center in there so that I have some uh, support while I do my turning at the top here. It's going to be a little close, but we'll make it work. So now I should be able to spin that up pretty fast. It's a 
about 1100 RPM. So I'm going to grab a bowl gouge and just start working away up here, kind of widening this out. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something just to widen out this mouth of this, this vase. Well, we have to make a decision here. Either we cut this about halfway gone so that we can get at this wing, or we just don't turn this wing very much. I, I really like both of them there. They would both still be there, it's just this would be reduced by about half of what it is now. I guess I'll work at leaving it there. Okay, back to drilling. I think that will do the trick. We'll get back to turning. About 1100 RPM. Well, everything about it is what I had in mind. Of course, I was going to turn the outside, and I still might, but I think before I do that, and it's too late, I think I'm going to sand up this bark and just see what it looks like. I think it's going to look pretty good. I could do a little more shear scraping on these wings if, if only I could. Maybe a regular scraper would work, huh? Yeah, let's try that. Okay, let's do some sanding. I'm going to start sanding with my Sandoflex. I'm going to use 80 grit. Typically when I do bark, I do 180 grit. But in this case, I want to remove as much of this loose stuff as I can and still leave some hint of bark. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to find out as soon as I get my mask on. Lay the spinning in reverse at about 320 RPM. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. I don't see anything flying off of here. Let's try this. That might be doing something. Let me work at this a while. I'll bring you back here in just a little bit when I see if it's working or not. Well, I'm really glad I did that. So I sanded it with 80 grit, and then um, <laughs> I kind of thought this might happen. Then I blew it off to blow the dust off of it, and some more bark came off. So then I sanded it with some more 80 grit, and I blew it off. 
and, a, and more bark came off, but it was less this time. So I did it again, and it was less again, and then I switched to 180 grit and uh, sanded it up and blew it off, and nothing came off. So I think I got it all, and I, I think it looked pretty cool. And can you see those wrinkles? See those wrinkles? I had another piece that I did, uh, I don't know, a couple months back, that had wrinkles in, in the wood. It's actual wrinkles, you can get your fingernail in there. And I'd never seen that before, but it's it's very cool. So I'm happy with this, and I think it looks nice with all those different colors and shapes and textures and whatnot in there. So now I'm going to turn my focus to uh, sanding the turned part, this part. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to just going to take my two-inch disc sander and do it manually. And I'm sure it'll take some uh, hand sanding as well, that kind of thing. So anyway, that's what I'm going to be working on for a little while. And I have a, a different finish that I'm going to apply. Something I haven't used for a long, long time. So I'll bring you back when it's time to try that. See you in a bit. The sanding went better than I thought it might. Pleasantly surprised by that. Really surprised, really happy with this outside unturned part. Oh, I'm applying uh, Danish oil. This this stuff, Watco Danish oil. I used to use this all the time, especially when I first started turning. Uh, and it does a real nice job. But what I don't like about it is, is the dry time, at least in my climate at least on a day like today where it's about, I don't know, 40, 47, 48 degrees, something like that. It just, it just takes too long to dry. And then you have to, you have to let this set for um, half an hour and then come back out and put another coat on, let that set for 15 minutes, and then come out again and wipe it off. And I don't always have that kind of time or it's even colder than it is now. So I, I just kind of quit using it. I'm uh, brushing inside the opening now. What I did for the inside of this is I just took a, uh, a half inch dowel that I have a split cut in the end of it. And I doubled over some sandpaper strips and uh, mounted, that, mounted that dowel up in my drill. And just let the sandpaper hang out couple inches and it did a, did a fantastic job in here. I was uh, pretty amazed at that. So all in all I'm pretty dang happy with this piece. I still have to figure out how I'm going to uh, mount it when I turn it around to take off the tenon. But that's going to be tomorrow. I'm going to let this set up tonight. I am going to, like I said, come back out and put on a second coat and then come out again and, and uh, wipe it off. But I'm done for today. I'm cold. It's cold out here compared to, you know, summertime. But this finish does get hard, different than some oils do. So that's what I do like about it. So I'll see you tomorrow. We'll turn this around take that tenon off. I had to make a new block of wood and I put a non-slip material on here. And that's so that I can put the vase over that and bring up my tailstock so that we can get rid of this tenon. And I still have the center hole there for reference. I'll just apply a little pressure. Bring up the tool rest. I'll spin this up a little bit, hold my fingernail against the tenon, make sure it's hitting equally all the way around, and it is. I'll turn the speed up to about 600. And I'll take this 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. We'll check for clearance. And we have clearance. Now I'm going to take a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge. I'm going to turn the speed down to 400 RPM on the lathe. And I'm just going to keep working away at that little nub. Now 
And that's pretty small, so now I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM. And I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the piece. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. Pressure towards the headstock. And when the little nub stops turning, we will know we're through. Like that. This is end grain, so more often than not, it just breaks apart. You just have to be aware of that. Then I'll just take it over here to the lay or to the uh, workbench, sand this up, get it signed, and I'll be right back. Well, there it is, one unturned vase. It's uh, three and a half inch diameter and just under eight inches tall. It's got some nice colors and grain textures in the bark. I guess we'll call that bark. There's the bottom all finished up. There's the inside. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm happier than I would have guessed I'd be. I'm really glad I didn't turn the outside. That, that just makes all the difference in the world, don't you think? Just a little bit of turning here on the two wings and to blend the blend the uh, inside to the outside. I hope you like it. I sure do. Thank you, Dave from Calmwood Creations for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. Your comments are always welcome and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.